Hey, it's Marina J. How are you doing today? So I want to talk to you about going no contact. If you have gone no, no contact or you are thinking, can I go no contact? I just want to take you through some thoughts with me today so that you can really hear yourself because it's very important for you to be able to shut the outside world out to really honor yourself and really hear yourself. Um, before I do that, I just wanna share that I am running some free training for you to really own your shadow. This is shadow work. So shadow work is falling in love with your light and your dark so that it has no power over you anymore. So that might be anxiety, that might be feelings of fear, for example. We wanna be able to feel all the feelings and instead of them having power over us, they actually give us our power back to always bring us back to our truth so that we can make the right decisions for ourselves. So I'm running that soon. It's called Expansion Week. It's for you to really own your shadow so you can expand into the light, right? And become this brilliant, magnificent, powerful being that you are. If this speaks to you, I'll put a link below. And I will see you real soon on that. It's the training that I give my private clients and I'm running this for free very soon. 7th, 8th, 9th of November. Um, let's talk about going no contact. So it's a really big decision. And when you've gone no contact, we'll start with that. When somebody's gone no contact, it is harder than death. I see it with my clients and with people that, you know, some of you have written the most amazing comments, like this channel, the way you're writing your comments are so profound and you're, you're so brave. Like it takes so much bravery to really decide that that parent or that sibling or that partner or whoever that person is can no longer be in your life. For you to decide that is huge. So if you've decided that, it's, I think it's one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing that you will ever have to do because a death is almost easier. A death is, well, they're not here right now. And then all the grief that will come from that. Going no contact is like, I don't have family anymore. So let's say it's family, or I don't have family anymore, or I don't have that person that was seemingly, you know, the closest person to me, or I don't have my child's father anymore. I don't have my child's mother anymore, whatever it is. And the grief that comes with it is huge. It's it's like a real death. It's like a real, real death. Um, and it's incredibly hard to do. And nobody else will really understand it except for the people that have had narcissistic abuse. Nobody will understand the gravitas and the strength it took for you to do that and for you to continuing to do that. People will say things like, but it's your mom. Oh, but it's your dad. Oh, but they're family, you know? And, 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 and you know, just, wouldn't you just give them another chance? And, you know, particularly if, say, a family member has been saying things online or whatever, like, you know, I love my child or I love, I, I don't understand why he's done this. I don't understand why she's done this. I don't understand what we've done wrong, right? <laughs> All this stuff, right? And they do know what they've done. Uh, and for you to understand that you don't need to explain yourself to anybody that hasn't been through it. And it's for you to really rebuild your life. Something about narcissistic abuse is so painful. And often the going no contact, you'll go through a period of time where there's a huge grief and you're not just grieving for the loss of what could have been. And for some of the love that is there, you're also often grieving for your childhood that if you look back at, you didn't really have, you didn't really have the relationships that you thought you had. So it's incredibly soul crushing. So if you've done it, amazing, right? Amazing, because what you're saying is no more abuse, no more abuse, no more abuse, that's it. 
right? And when you do that, I call them timelines. Another word for timeline is opportunity. Like a new timeline will always open. When you say no, it's huge. I want to talk to you about if you're thinking of it. If you can really shut out the noise and really hear yourself, you have to feel how that person affects you or how they affect you, right? It could be your whole family or it could be a whole organization, for example. Maybe it's a company, maybe it's a really narcissistic uh, community, wherever it is, right? Now, you, some of these community groups can, can just be like the worst. Um, when you really feel how much it's annihilated you, this could be physically, right? The number of clients I see that have back problems, digestive problems, they are overeating, they are abusing themselves with food, right? Sugar, 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 to try and mitigate the damage that's happening on a daily basis. When you actually look at what it's costing you in terms of your well-being, the energy that you have to really live your best life, all of it, you have to go, is it worth it? And if it hasn't changed all the way up until now, right, whatever age you're at, if it hasn't changed all the way up until now, and you've tried to make them see, you've tried to fix it, but remember, you're going in with a different intent, right? Your intent is love. Your intent is to really fix this relationship. And what's their intent? Their intent is to obliterate it. They don't care. They don't want it. They, they, they're not even seeing you. All they're hearing and seeing is, you know, how you affect them. And if you're holding up the truth, if you're a truth teller, they will find that very threatening and it won't go anywhere. So when there's two different intents from a relationship, it's impossible. And it's impossible to have a relationship with a narcissist. So if you are contemplating going no contact, it is one of the hardest things that you will ever do. It will also be one of the most liberating things that you will ever do because you're saying no to the hurt and no to the abuse. And when you do that, that is the real healing can take place because finally you're in a space where you don't have things coming at you all the time and you've actually got the space to spend on you because your energy is not leaving you it's not bleeding you outwards trying to fight all these battles or to try and figure things out right because literally the narcissist will swoop in create some sort of drama say something whatever and then boom right all your energy is is bleeding out to that uh situation when you decide to go no contact right or if you're deciding it it could be your mom it could be your dad could be your sibling it could be people that were really really close to you it could be a best friend it could be somebody you've gone into business with it could be a community it doesn't matter who it is right whether it's blood whether it's just somebody really close to you see if you can take that voice out of your head that says but they're this person because if you were to take out their label of they're 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 a mum, for example, and you just looked at them as energy, or you just looked at them as emotion. Can you see that they haven't earned the right to be in your inner circle because they don't care? And how easy is it going to be for you to live a good life if you continue saying yes to? this energy leak in your life. If you're trying to get from point A to point B and you're on a boat and they these people keep punching holes in the boat and you're, you're trying to kind of stay above water, how easy is it for you to live your highest potential this lifetime? And when does it ever end? When does it ever end? If you know in your heart of hearts, you've tried your best, you can look yourself in the eye and it might be that you've looked yourself in the eye and gone, you know what, I've did my best with my child's other parent. I can look my child in the eye when they're older and go, I did my best. But if anything in your life is annihilating you on a regular basis, this isn't about you have to get stronger, you have to do it better. I'm gonna see if I can say it this way and then maybe that'll fix it, maybe that'll help it, maybe they'll see. At some point, you have to just shut out all the noise and look within and go, 
this is hurting me too much. This is crushing me too much. And if I was to treat myself as the most precious being on this planet, do I want to continue allowing this hurt in because they're my dot, dot, dot? Well, I'll tell you now, that's not a mother. That's not a mother. A mother would never do that to you. That's not a father. A father would never do that to you, right? These people that say, you know, they're your mom, but, you know, your dad, but that's that's not. And, and you know, imagine that you were telling somebody right now about a coworker or a boss that was treating you really badly. Probably they would say to you, oh, just leave the job. Oh my God, that's awful, leave the job. But as soon as you swap out the name and you swap out boss for dad, for example, the person goes, oh, and what are they more likely to do? Side with the parents, right? Or side with your siblings, side with the family, because it's family. Make sure you're not doing that too, because they're not in the abuse. They're not getting it like you are. They don't know. They're not in your position. Never, ever, 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 ever take advice from people that do not have to deal with the consequences of whether you stay or whether you go. You have to listen to you. There is no right or wrong. I will say that in my experience, it is very difficult to really gain momentum in your life if contact is continued with somebody or people who have a different intent for communication with you. If they're there to get, if they're there to annihilate, an, an, annihilate, right? Obliterate, crush, right? Because think about the cleanup. When you've seen them, when you've talked to them, or even when you hear about them, the cleanup can take months. It can take years, right? I had a client once who decided that 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 he was going to go back and and meet with his dad and his dad was getting older and he flew across the country and he was like all right I'm just gonna see if we can break bread and make this a moment and what happened was I call it a narc attack it was just so disgusting so revolting and my client just couldn't really get it together for about four months they that was like that one meeting was enough to obliterate him. And you get to a point where you're like, well, if that father, if I knew that that father was never gonna change, was never gonna learn, was never gonna grow, and all it was doing was devastating me, this isn't about I have to get stronger, it is abuse, right? This is what abuse is, it's obliterating. If I knew that he was never gonna change, what would I decide for the whole rest of my life? Do I want that freedom? Do I want the energy? If I look at my life thus far, where my energy has been compromised consistently, how much have I really achieved of my dreams in this part of my life? And if the answer is not as much, not as fast, not as quickly, well, do you want the same to happen again? Only this time you're gonna be a bit older with even less energy. You've got to decide for you now. It's not about doing right by people. You've done right by people for your whole life. This is about now survival. And I no longer want to be in survival anymore. I no longer want to be available for people to abuse me. And that is a very noble, very worthy decision. Because if people are your parents, your siblings, whomever, right? They have a duty of care to care for you. And if they haven't been doing that, they haven't been doing their side of the relationship, you're under no obligation to continue being abused in order to stay in an abusive situation. You really, really don't. So go where you can lift up, go where your energy can come back, right? You're too beautiful, you're too powerful, you're too important not to. So always just shut out the noise and listen to you. And I've had clients that have gone no contact and they've just soared, they've absolutely soared. I have clients that sort of do semi-contact, right? And they do soar, they do do good. 
clients that stay with a narcissist, I've never seen a client completely sore. I just haven't. I just haven't because the abuse, I mean, another word for abuse, right, is annihilation, right? And it's like, do you really want to go back to a war zone and an emotional war zone? It could be a physical war zone, but financial abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, I mean, it's impossible. It's a bit like saying, I'm a flower. I should be strong enough to be stomped on, kicked and desecrated, right? I should be strong enough to have literally no water. That's impossible. You are meant to be shining. You're meant to be literally lighting up your life with you. Don't allow anybody to continually take that away from you. You get to decide how it's going to be because we can't rely on them to shift and change because if they haven't thus far and they're showing no signs of their self-reflecting, right? there's our answer. So it's not them that we're waiting for. It's us. What are we going to shift? What are we going to change? And are we now going to decide, you know what? I want a world where things keep adding to me rather than keep taking away. And only you can make that decision. So don't get hijacked by, oh, but they're family, oh, but they're whatever. No, change it and go, oh, they're abusive. They're abusers, right? Do I want to stay loyal to this kind of energy? Not really. Anyway, I hope this has really, really helped you. Loads of love.